Hi, and welcome to What the Kids Be Saying. I am your host, Esther Brunat, and What the Kids Be Saying is your source of behind-the-curve pop culture knowledge straight from a high school teacher's classroom. I keep up with Gen Z so that you do not have to. Today is a special report on cheating, aka homework help. Let me tell you what happened to me the other day. I posted a video about my students cheating using photo math and it went viral currently at 1.1 million views uh, so I was telling them how to cheat better in fact and the students proceeded to troll me in the comments and explain to me all of the apps and websites that were way better than photo math watch here They're gonna cheat using photo math. Don't copy the time sign! And then be like, I know I got those answers right. You need to go fix that computer. Because I'm gonna be like, how you know you got them right? Because you cheated. Let's look at these comments. My girlfriend has you in algebra too. LOL. Um, Mathway and Moth Papa are the best options. Use Wolfram Alpha. Not Miss Brunat going viral on TikTok. <laughs> She's literally telling y'all how to cheat better and you're mad at her. Exactly. We're at the top. Shut up, teacher. How about you teach correctly so we don't, so we won't cheat? I will still be using photo math. Brainly. And some of them didn't know why the X was wrong. And I just thought that was funny. Now I know my math teacher got a TikTok. <laughs> some of them got caught after this. That's why. School ain't even about learning. It's just about passing. I can't be mad at that. I got Microsoft math. I'm about to go over all this. What I decided to do is I decided to research all of the comments that were left telling me different programs that the students were using to cheat during this online school uh, fiasco is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> I thought that it was only for math. But what I realized quickly is that actually they have stuff for everything. And so guess what, y'all? I'm snitching. I'm snitching. I'm snitching. I'm snitching. Because y'all decided to drop all of this knowledge in my comment section. I'm over here doing the Lord's work for all of the teachers out here. Just so you know, is there anything that we can do about it? Probably not but knowing about it at least will help. So let's talk about all of the different options that are available. First of all, Canda. I think that's how you say it. Canda, here's a little screen or a snippet of what Canda has to offer. This is Canda, it's on an app on the phone, but basically look, crowdsourcing. it's like crowdsourcing for problems. Snap a picture, which guys means we're screwed. Because <laughs> look, these are textbook pictures what? that you shouldn't be able to scan on Mathway. But apparently, look, here we are getting answers to all types of problems. Look, work. Photo math, which is the origin story of all of this. I have it on my phone. Sometimes I use it to check my work, which is the actual right and good and pure reason for apps like this. But it's kind of frustrating that companies market themselves as homework help, help your child when they know good and well the students are cheating, right? So there's Photomath, and Photomath used to not be able to read handwriting, but guess what? It reads handwriting now, y'all. Socratic, I saw a lot of this in the comments. So let's see what Socratic has to offer. Get unstuck, learn better. Actually, I like that as a slogan. So yeah, let's talk about Socratic. The screen shows um, some of Socratic, the stuff you can that put anything on there. You can speak a problem into there. You can type a problem into there. Um, and this is, I believe, look, you take a picture, you see in that? Take a picture and upload it, you can speak it. It gives them explainers, question and answers, related videos. Guys, okay. And it's owned by Google. <laughs> Works for all subjects. And this is what the kids told me in the comments that it does book reports, like just crazy. It's not just math. So it's built for learning with help from teachers. Socratic brings you visual explanations. But listen, it's really just. <sighs> 
it's really just kids cheating. Okay, it does a lot of math, but it also this is a Google does platform. Can you English. believe that? Google. If it was like something English in there, but yeah, we're we're just yeah. Now we have Symbol Lab. I got a few of these and Symbol Lab. They have a geometry beta. Some of the kids are like, I can't cheat, I'm in geometry, but look, it's coming. Honestly, this is com complicated. Like what even is happening? You know, I don't know, but they got everything. Symbol Lab. And was it showing them steps? Oh, you gotta pay. Boop. All right, next up, Mathway. What about Mathway? A lot of the students said that Mathway is a more accurate version of Photo Lab. So I'm Photo Math. A lot of times, Photo Math will have mistakes, um, and Mathway has way less mistakes. And because of that, a lot of them prefer this. Now, let's take note that this says this is a Chegg service. If you were in college, you know Chegg was a way to rent books. It was a hack, right? Like you could rent a book for a semester, just a semester at like a fraction of the price that you would have bought it at the bookstore. So these are big companies that are backing these methods. Mathway. They say that Mathway is better. I'm gonna try to copy this. This gives you options using the quadratic formula. Tap to view steps. Okay. We don't want to sign in. But the kids keep saying, use Mathway, use Mathway, use Mathway. So it must be better. Math Papa. This was the first one besides Mathway that started popping up a lot in my comments. And honestly, I don't hate it. It's user friendly, it shows work, it gives resources, and most of, mostly it's like, it's user friendly and reader friendly. So for a student, I could see how they would lean towards this because it's actually helping them comprehend what's happening. And so if they're looking at photo math or symbol lab or something like that, a lot of times they can't explain to you what happened, but Math Papa actually helps them be able to explain how they got there. So this app is Math uh, Math Papa. I typed in the same quadratic I've been, and it lets you simplify. I don't. There's no like terms. It lets you factor. Um, let's see if I set it equal to zero. If it lets me uh, solve by factoring. Okay, step by step. There we go. Can I now? I have quadratic formula. Show step by step. And this is actually the best version I've seen. Um, solve by completing the square. Ooh, upgrade to step by step. Oh, no, thank you. Next up is Brainly. I do not get a lot of information from this website because I think I had to like sign up and I like, didn't feel like going through all of it. But Brainly offers a lot of a variety of subjects. Pair up with your kid. So all of these are like under the guise of you get to help your kid when we know that the kids are not they're just cheating why is it still blurry uh so this one look at all this help that we got look at look at and it's people in the background that's crazy Now we have calculator soup. I know you're like, how many of these are there? There's a lot, y'all. There's a lot. <laughs> now calculator soup is just a website full of different calculators like uh, circle calculators, triangle calculators, uh, combining like terms calculator, like different areas of math, a different calculator where you could just input values, quadratic formula calculator, you can just input values and it'll give you the answer to the problem. I think that's actually like kind of helpful or I could see how it could be helpful um, for different subjects when you need to be quick at doing this part to get to another part. So it is what it is. Next up is Calculator Soup. It has a bunch of online calculators. 
So let's go to plane geometry. Let's go to circles. Oh, I can find C is the circumference. A, I assume, is the area. So if I calculate it, what happens? The radius, good area. Yep, it gives them everything about a circle. What more could they want? In terms of pi, teach them how to find each individual thing. Interesting. Now we have Microsoft Math Solver. Did you hear that? Microsoft. So we've already got something from Google. We've already got something from Chegg. Now we have something from Microsoft. Like these big old companies have taken on this homework help thing, which means we've mainstreamed it and they're not going anywhere. Math. I don't even know Microsoft had something like this. So let's go to a quadratic equation. There's just so many. Factor by grouping. View solution steps. Is it actually gonna factor? By grouping? Oh yeah, it does. It splits up the middle term. Then you have to find the GCF of the first term. And, yep, it does it. Wow, wow, wow. That's it, y'all. Those are all of the different things. Now, here's my humble opinion. My humble opinion is that I don't know if it's a good thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing. I just know it's a thing and it's not going away. Like I said before, big companies are backing some of these resources. So they're here to stay. There's, there's people who think that there's value in these things. Google, Microsoft, Chegg. And if they think there's value in these things, this is the direction that we're going in. I think we've, as a math teacher, I've always wanted my, my students to be problem solvers, critical thinkers, right? And our work is not doing that anymore. It's not making them problem solvers. It's not making them critical thinkers. Um, instead, somebody from probably my generation figured out a solution to a problem. They were problem solvers. They were like, we don't want to do homework. Let's figure out a way to, to make this go away. So I think we need to stop pretending us as a society, as a school system, as an education system. We need to stop pretending that these don't exist. We need to stop pretending like our work is valuable valuable um if kids can just look it up or crowdsource it or you know get it from a website by scanning it we need to stop pretending that and we need to push uh education in a new direction that's going to help us be able to build a society that um can be innovative you know this is innovative this this technology this kind of stuff it's innovative and so we want to be able to push our students to become people who can you know, make stuff like this, but we don't want to create robots who are just copying and pasting things. So it's just a, a whole big complicated thing. And I think coronavirus honestly gives us an opportunity to push the education system in a different direction. Now that kids don't have to be at school seven and a half hours a day, now that um, students can be at their homes or they can be at school or they can, you know, spend half their day doing one thing and then half their day doing something else. I think we need to reconfigure. I know that's easier said than done, but um, I said it. Somebody do it. <laughs> I hope this was helpful to you guys. But y'all, that's where we are. This is the cheating special. This is the third episode on what the kids be saying that I've done on cheating. Um, the first one was such a hit that I had to do a follow up for more things that people were telling me. And then this time after I posted that video and it went viral, it was like, I have to tell the people that all of our efforts, the amount of hard work and effort that I'm putting into my job to teach my students is being thwarted by a bunch of an army of websites and um, Google and Microsoft and Chegg. And I can't compete with that. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. And you know, the purpose of what the kids be saying is for you to stay hip. And I want you to know what's up. So stay hip, friends.